Hi everyone, welcome back to the workshop and it's repair time again and this time we've got something a little bit more old school it's a Tektronics 2215 60MHz oscilloscope this came from the UK, it was supplied originally by Electroplan I've seen many of those labels on old test equipment and this one was kindly supplied by Adam here in the UK and the idea being if I get this up and running I'm actually going to donate it to uh, anyone in the UK so sorry for those overseas PCB Way is your one-stop solution that's been expanded from their large variety of PCB prototyping solutions to 3D printing, CNC machine work and sheet metal fabrication. PCB Way also has a growing community on their site where it's become an open platform for makers to exchange and share their ideas including the PCB Way store where some of the hottest modules can be purchased. I've been using PCB Way for years for my own products. Always reliable, always quality and always on time. So the symptoms of the fault with this unit is that it is blowing fuses or it's tripping his RCD. So obviously there's going to be a power supply problem I would have thought and secondary he did say that it produces a distorted stationary display on the actual CRT so not sure what's going on there it might be related to the same power supply fault so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up not going to power it up I don't want to trip my own RCDs and we'll take a look inside and see if we can see anything obvious Well, here we are inside the unit and you can see we've got the power supply over here nicely cased up and we've got a number of boards. It looks like we've got a main board at the bottom there uh, which runs under the underside there, almost full size. And we've got a few other boards. We've got some additional daughter boards that connect up the front panel switches and controls. And we've also got another little uh, daughter board here. I do have the manual, so I think I've got the uh, actual schematics for it. But uh, let me just dig a little bit deeper. Let's uh, try and get inside this power supply and take a look. Okay, it managed to get inside the power supply by removing its cover and this little Perspex guard and it managed to expose the actual circuit boards and there's a couple of screws around the edge which allowed me to release the board as you see here and right away I've spotted something inside so let's take a look now what you're looking at here that is the back of the IEC connector uh, inside the unit but underneath it right hidden right behind that red protection device there is a reefer cap and by the looks of it it looks a little bit cracked on the case hard to see but if I just pull this down here yeah look at that reefer cap there that uh, doesn't look too handy so I suspect that's what's causing the uh, RCD to go so let me dig a little bit deeper. I might need to take that IEC connector off to get at that actual reefer and I'll replace it. Now I have actually took my multimeter to much of the power supply just to make sure that it's safe to go inside given that it's actually producing the high voltage for the CRT as well. There is actually a cable here, this is the HV high tension cable for the CRT which actually comes from the power supply as well so I've made sure everything's safe and it's, the scope's been sitting for uh, weeks already and it's absolutely dead so it's safe to go inside. And there we go, you can see the reefer down there so now I've got some good access to it I'll fire up the soldering iron and uh, remove it from the board. I had to take this little guard off here. This is uh, covering the underside of the circuit board and it's revealed the solder side of the board. And C901 there is the reefer. And there it is. Uh, maybe not as bad as I thought it was, but it definitely looks a little bit worse for wear anyway. So this reefer cap was in a X class configuration across the supply coming in, the live and neutral. So I'm looking for something X class here. 
I think that one's a bit big. Aha! Here we go, this might do the job. Let's have a look. I think I can make this one work. And these are 100 nanofarad X2 class. And perfect spacing. And there we go. Just got to snip the legs and that's that one fitted. So I do actually have the schematic, uh, the full manual, service manual for this scope. And as you can see, you've got the AC input coming in here, the chassis, the main on-off switch there. And we've got that red mauve that was on the circuit board there. I have actually checked it. It's not short circuit or anything like that. It's sitting at about its nominal resistance. And next to it is that reefer cap, that X-class capacitor there, C901, that I just replaced. And from there, we're connected through uh, a couple of resistors there onto a common mode choke, a bunch of uh, capacitors down the ground, and another common mode choke. So you've got quite a filter circuit here, and that's before we even get to the bridge rectifier. Coming down off of here, we've got some series resistors here, quite large values, 43k, it's effectively driving this uh, transformer here, uh, so it can't be producing a lot of current given those large values. I don't anticipate there's any problem there, but I will check it out anyway, make sure we've not got a winding connected down to ground or anything like that. And the same for the rest of this circuit here. So I'll go away and have a look at that now and see what I can find. So inside the unit once again, we've got this IEC connector here, and it is actually a filter as well. And it looks like it's uh, from the year dot. So actually, I think I'm just going to go ahead and replace this. I've got some in stock, and I think just for the safety side of things, we make sure we've got a good working uh, filter. Can't really say whether these capacitors are fit for purpose anymore it could be any one of these that's causing that uh, RCD to trip so I think I'll just go ahead and replace it anyway well checking my stock I do actually have a number of these inline filters and 6 amp I think that'll do the job nicely so let me go away and fit that now well, there's the filter in place now, and I've put some heat shrink sleeving over the wires there to keep it a little bit safer. But I'm just thinking about this uh, polyester capacitor down here by the looks of it. It's actually across the live and neutral as well, so it's another X-class capacitor. So I think I'll actually just go and change that one out. It's 0.1 microfarad, so I'll just replace it with one of the same again. Well, there's it removed, but actually the footprint in this capacitor is a little bit smaller, so I'm actually going to fit one of these. This is uh, an X2 class capacitor, but it should do the job, and it's got nice some nice long legs in it. I'm sure I can squeeze this one in where this one used to be. Well, that's the capacitor fitted, so let me go ahead now and bolt up the inline filter. And interestingly, that little transformer I mentioned that had those large series resistors driving it, there it is there. Nice little small unit there. So I will check that one out just to make sure it's not shorted to its own uh, ground connections, anything like that. But uh, yeah, that's a nice little encapsulated transformer there. So here's the back of that small transformer there. You can see the four pins there and it's one to two and three to four for the circuit. Pin three is actually tied to chassis earth. So let me just uh, hook up the multimeter here, and there is pins 1 to 2, 80 ohms, and the other side should be the same. Yep, 80 ohms. I think I'll resolder this joint here though. It looks a little bit suspect, as does that one as well. And just checking across it, just to make sure we've got no resistance at all. Perfect. So let me go away and resolder those joints there, and we'll move on. Well, I think I've found one small problem. Uh, let's take a look at schematic. This is actually the pre-regulator part of the power supply. You've got the mains input coming in here, and uh, one of the lines comes away off to one side of this transformer here, uh, driving the primary side. The other side, we've got a large MOSFET, which is driven by a 16-pin IC here. And basically, it's a pre-regulator. So Q933 is this MOSFET. 
and if you look closely it's got a little dashed line round about it and it looks like it's tied to earth so perhaps some sort of heat sink or something like that that must be earthed uh, on that MOSFET so let's take a look at it on the actual board and there we go there's the actual MOSFET there this little um, caddy that it's on basically just screws down onto the chassis there so that'll be rock solid in place when it's all bolted up but look at this here we've got some kind of substrate here it's just a, uh, a heat sink of some kind so it looks like that just sits in there like that but I'm not really sure what's meant to hold it in place perhaps when it's bolted into the chassis let's take a look yes yes so actually there's no problem at all I've just got to be careful when I put it back together again where this bolts into there's a bracket inside the actual chassis that covers this entire area so it holds that substrate against the actual MOSFET itself so I need to keep an eye on that but in the meantime there's a few capacitors on the board here I'm going to measure them and see what they're like well look what I spotted on the top side of this uh, pre-regulator board another couple of reefer caps and they do look like they're cracking something terrible right next to that bridge rectifier so there's one at the other side I believe yep there's one this side there's one at the other side so I'll just go away and change them now I suspect they're Y class uh, since there's two of them right next to that bridge rectifier and so with the reefers removed I've actually got four new single layer ceramic capacitors Y1 class uh, the same value as the original reefers 2.2 nanofarad so let me fit those onto the board here then we're actually going to take a look at the schematic for this board and just get some kind of idea about how it works okay capacitors fitted as you can see right so this board is known officially as the A18 pre-regulator board let's take a look at the schematic okay so as I said earlier we've got the mains AC input coming in here we've got a couple of chokes actually that's them both there and that comes on to the bridge rectifier here immediately producing a large DC voltage so off of that large DC supply we've got a dropper resistor a 150k that comes down onto this little network here of PMP MPN transistors and a Zener diode and that's producing a plus 14 volt supply coming down onto the collectors of the main output transistors of this TL494 PWM IC and it also produces a 13.9 volt supply coming into this 5 volt reference circuit here on pin 14 of the TL494 is a very stable 5 volt supply and that's used it's fed back into this error amplifier circuit down here the large DC supply comes onto one side of the primary side of this transformer T933 the other side is driven by a MOSFET which is controlled by the TL494 now we also have a feedback mechanism to control the TL494 that's via R929 this 10k resistor here coming back along here into the other side of this error amplifier circuit and back up to this transformer here that's driven by the MOSFET on the secondary side you've got the main output coming down and out via this L937 inductor and just to expand a little bit further that output actually goes into this driver circuit here which is controlling the primary side of T940 which is the main transformer on the main board within the unit so that's how I think the pre-regulator is working anyway quick look at the schematic only I haven't looked much further than that but I think we've got enough information about how it works and I've replaced as much as I need to on the actual board so I think we're actually ready for a power up so let's get it back onto the workbench and build it back into the case 
Now that's the unit back together, it's quick and easy to do, so I've just completely put it back together with protective cover etc. So the power switch is on at the moment, I've got a good fuse in, so let me just check the primary side. 132k, now remember this unit doesn't have a transformer, so 132k is probably okay. So let's check it to earth, either both sides, and that side's open circuit, and... That side had something for a second there, did it? Or was it just the meter? Well, it's uh, way up in the mega ohm, so that looks okay. So here's my test setup. I've got my variable transformer plugged into the workshop RCD. It's a 10 milliamp RCD. The output from the variable transformer comes through here and away off to my quick block here. The tails on the quick block go away off to the scope. And the reason I've bared these here is so that I can monitor the supply current versus the return current. And I'm going to do that with my leakage current tester. So that'll go across the live and neutral, like that. And if there's no leakage whatsoever, then the supply current will equal the return current and it will cancel out the tester here and it should stay at zero milliamps. Any leakage down to ground within the scope itself will show up the supply current will not equal the return current and that difference will appear on the current tester. So let me reposition the camera, let me get it set up and we'll see what happens. Okay here we go, I've got the tail hooked up to the scope, the scope power switch is on, I've got the variable transformer down at uh, minimum, I've got zero on the display there, so let me just put power on. And we've already got 0.2 of a milliamp, so let me wind it up slowly. And we're at 60 volts. And we're hovering round about the 0.4 milliamp mark. 160 volts, still 0.2 of a milliamp now. And we're at 220 volts. So, no RCD's been tripped. So hopefully that reefer capacitors fixed that problem. So I think we're safe to just put 240 volts straight in without the variable transformer. My leakage current is uh, 0.3 of a milliamp. Perfect. Okay, here we go. I've got 240 volts going straight in at the back now, so let's turn on the scope. Let's see what happens. I heard something there. You wouldn't have heard that. It sounded like the HV transformer just kicking into life. Yes! We've got two traces on the display. Brilliant. Haha, <laughs> yes! Got some control on both of those traces. Brilliant. So let me go and feed in a test signal. Let's get uh, this display set up properly and let's see if the scope's working. Well, it looks like we've got a fault with the scope. It is actually working. As you can see, I've got a nice bright trace on the display. Uh, I've got channel one enabled only at the moment. And the trace is in the bottom half of the screen there. And I can't actually pull it up any further. The wide deflection looks like it's offset somehow or other uh, towards the bottom end of the screen there. Even if I put it into AC mode and uh, I just can't get it any higher than that there. And if I feed in a signal, I've got a one, what have I got? A 1 volt peak to peak 100 hertz signal. I am actually getting a trace on the display, but if I bring it up to the top, it basically just uh, it disappears. And the more I pull it down, the more I start to get the right sort of signal there. And yep, ground's working, but uh, I just can't pull it up any higher. And that's irrespective of what I put the. Uh, volts per division set to obviously I'm going a bit higher now so that I can actually see more 
of it there but you can see as I wind it up to try and bring that trace up it's just squashing it and it's just topping out at fully clockwise so there's something wrong with the uh, Y deflection there and channel 2 is exactly the same okay so let's try and find out why we've got a vertical problem on the CRT well looking at the schematic this is the part of the main A10 board here and this is a differential amplifier you've basically got two signals coming in here that come from effectively the front panel input board and those two signals are amplified and drive the CRT plus and CRT minus connections on the actual CRT. Now these can be thought of as independent signal amplifiers so what I can do is measure across R338 and R348 as I adjust the vertical adjust position pot on the front panel of the scope and I should see a range of voltage at these two pins about plus or minus 100 millivolts and that should translate into a much higher voltage change uh, at the two pins here that go away off to the actual deflection plate itself. So let me set that up and we'll take a look. So I've marked on red R338 and R348 there and then there's the two pins here, there's a couple of square pads there that's where the wires go away off to the actual deflection plate itself so I'll measure the input there and measure the corresponding output and the same on the other side Now as far as I know the range of output signal for the given input signal uh, minus 100 millivolts should give me about 2 volts output something like that I'm not too sure and plus 100 millivolts should give me something like 8 volts output and the same effectively on the other side so I've got my left hand on the vertical position pot so we'll go on to R338 first and we'll set it up to minus 100 millivolts oh, other way There we go, and the corresponding output is about 1.7 volts. Now let's go at the other end, so back to 338 again, let's go to plus 100 millivolts. There we go, and let's see what that is now. And that's about 8.2 volts. So it is changing and it is amplifying within the range required as far as I can tell. So now let's go into the other side. R348. Let's set that up to using the same pot on the front panel. Minus 100 millivolts. There we go. And let's go on to the output at that side wow 21 volts that's definitely not right back to 348 again let's go to plus 100 millivolts and that's still 21 volts so there's definitely a problem on that side of the differential amplifier the R348 side so let's go back to the schematic. Okay, so I've got my signals coming in here. These two transistors here are working okay because I am getting minus 4.3 and minus 4.3 there. So the problem must lie up here. And sure enough, there's a test voltage here plus 1.9 volts, uh, which you should get the same on both sides. And this side's working fine no problem at all i'm getting about two volts but this side here is stuck at like plus eight volts so one of these transistors here provided those resistors are uh, not cracked or broken in any way one of these transistors must be gone so i'll have a look at those resistors make sure they're okay and failing that i'll try and see if i can find replacements for these two transistors well, I've got some replacement transistors for Q386. That's the one with that weird package. So 
Uh, I've got BFR96 and the BFR96S. I'm actually just going to use the S version and uh, stick that on the board. So I'll go away and uh, put that onto the board now and I'll come back. Right, so there's Q386 soldered in place. Now before I actually I turn over the scope and try it, I'm actually going to measure um, the problem and see if it's fixed. So let me set that up. Right, first the good side. I'm not going to bother measuring the input. I'm just going to go direct to the output. But this is the good side. Now as you can see in the multimeter, that's varying no problem at all. So let me go on to the other side, which was stuck at 21 volts. Ah, now. That's looking a lot better. Let me turn over the scope and let's see if we've got a decent CRT now. Right. We're all ready for a power up. Let's try it out and see what happens. Take a second to warm up. And we've got a trace. Yes! Yes! I can now move the trace from the bottom all the way up to the top. No problem at all. So that one transistor has fixed the problem. So let me try a test signal now. I've got one ready. I've got what have I got? A one kilohertz, one volt peak to peak sine wave. So let's try. Yes, look at that. Brilliant. Yes. Ah, that looking great. Let me try. It's DC mode at the moment. That's ground. And there's AC mode, which was looking the same. Now it shouldn't. Ah, wait a minute. Ah. These switches here on the front panel are in a clean. Between the ground and the AC, there's an extra indentation, which has given me the AC mode. But if I put it right across... It looks like it's jumping back to DC again. Yeah, and if I can play around with that. Yeah, that's AC there. If I switch it to a square wave, it should be more pronounced. So there's a square wave. I haven't done any probe compensation, of course. There's DC mode. There's ground. There's right across. That looks the same. But if I take it back, yeah, there's AC mode. So that switch is needing a clean... An extra indentation could be something needing bent slightly, maybe. Let's try channel 2 whilst we're here. Wow. DC, AC, that one's a lot better. Still dirty though, you can see that as I move it around. Wow, that's dirty, it's in ground there and it's just, yeah. And that's working perfect as well. Well, let me go away and just uh, clean up those switches. I've got some deoxit. I'll just uh, try them on the actual switch contacts and then I'll come back. Cleaned up the switches with deoxit and it's a little bit better, but there's still that notch in that switch. I'm not going to tear the front panel down. I think it's a major operation looking at it. So I'm just going to leave it as it is. Well, it looks like we've still got a little bit of a problem, and that is the calibration of the Y deflection. It's quite far out. Uh, I'm on, what am I giving it? I'm giving it a 1 volt peak to peak square wave, and I'm on 1 volt per division. And as you can see, if I just adjust it down slightly, we're probably about 80%, maybe 85% of that. So I do need to adjust that, and the calibration. Sorry, wrong one. The calibration is right round at the indented position. So I've identified there's a pot on the board uh, for the channel 2 Y deflection gain. So I should be able to adjust that and bring it back up. So we're doing channel 2. So that's R286 on the main board, which I've uh, got my trimming tool into at the moment. So if I just wiggle it back and forward, yep, yeah, that's doing something. So let me just... Bring it up a bit and then compensate it there, or nearly there. Yeah, and I think that'll about do it right there. 
and I'll do the same for channel one. Let me just adjust that down there. And R186 is for channel one. Let me just get my probe in there. And there we go. And I think that'll about do that there. Perfect. Well, I'm quite happy with that. I mean, it is an old scope. The controls are a little bit crusty, but it's not too bad. It's just a 60 megahertz oscilloscope. And the plan I've got for this is I'm going to run it for a while, just leave it powered up, play around with it for the next few weeks, uh, maybe a month or so, and then give it away. So follow me on Twitter and hopefully you should see an announcement. If you're young, just starting out and you want a scope for free, then you can drop me a line and I'll ship it to you free of charge. So feel free to discuss below and please remember to like and subscribe. It really does make a difference. Thanks for watching.